But again, the, the American authorities say Nicholas Alaverdi and Nicholas Rossi is a person whose multiple aliases uh, was a liar, a manipulator, um, and was very savvy at hiding himself. So why shouldn't I believe that you're just doing that again? Uh, because um, we also have in our possession a letter from Mr. Alaverdi that was given to us by the United States authorities that claims that, or that states that he has the intention to move overseas and uh, uh, is doing that uh, for uh, his future and his safety. And he has for the aliases, you have um, an alias of uh, Alabadian, for name N.I. Uh, Alabadian Rosie, for name Nicholas. Uh, Family name Rosie, for name Nicholas Edward. Family name Rosie, for name Nicholas Alabadian. Family name Rosie, for name Nicholas E. Family name Rosie, for name Nicholas. Family name Alan, for name Nick. Family name Rosie, for name Nicholas. Family name Rosie, for name Nicholas. And now, uh, I, but I, I guess my question is, why shouldn't I believe that you're him? You can believe whatever you like. I'm just telling you what I know. Yeah. Uh, Chase, what do you got? This accent is so bad. I don't know how his wife uh, got over this at the initial stage of that relationship. When they first started dating, something had to click in her head at some moment in time. She had to realize this sounds different, sounds unusual. I don't know the case very well, so I'm not sure what all these names mean. And why would the U.S. authorities send him this letter that uh, that he says he got? Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the British actors seem to have developed a lot better uh, skills at doing American accents. But I think that's oh, yeah. largely because... They live in the U.S. They've trained to work in Hollywood for a really long time. There's probably Americans who are on Broadway and stuff in, in London who do a great job. But they're equally bad and good on both sides, like uh, Meryl Streep doing Margaret Thatcher or Hugh Laurie doing Dr. Greg House. Uh, he, he makes this common mistake of taking on this more central dialect of this accent, I think. It's different here. I don't know what it is. I'm going to pass it to Mark in a second. But he's not using the dialect of where he's claiming to live in the UK, as far as I can tell. Mark, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so he shifts around from place to place to place because he he, because he hasn't grown up anywhere in the UK, essentially, or, or, or in uh, Dublin, where he, I think he claims to be born in 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 Dublin, we'll we'll hear in a moment him uh, going for a, for an Irish accent in a, in a in a few in a few. But yeah, it's all over the place. For me, actually, Greg uh, uh, Chase, it's hard to pick up his accent because he's just he's just reciting bureaucracy into a bucket at the moment. It's just hard to. Uh, the closest I can get is I've got an old Italian biscuit tin here, and I haven't tried this out. But but this is this is the kind of thing. It is. The, <laughs> this is the kind of sound that I'm I'm getting. Imagine some kind of bureaucratic. That's that's all I can hear from from the guy. Um, and here's my point. I didn't want to show you my my Italian biscuit tin. What I wanted to 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 show you is that if you're trying to clear your name, clarity is your number one objective. So were I trying to clear my name, say in Italy, I would not pick up a biscuit tin and talk into the biscuit tin like this, I would take a moment, even if I was on my dying breath, I'd go, I will die. I, I will die telling you this. So I'm going to take away the biscuit tin and clearly in my last breath tell you that I'm not this person. I'm innocent of everything. He doesn't do that. It's very odd. Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, it's bigger than that, Mark. Throughout this entire thing, neither he nor she gives definite answers to anything. We're going to see in a minute where she's talks about a number of years instead of they don't come out and say, I did this, I did this, I did that, I did that. And he does a When this questioner who does a great job of using repeat questions and not letting him get away, starts asking him questions, he chaffs and chaffs and chaffs. And he reads a laundry list of names, surname, this first name, that surname, this first name, that 
what the hell is he doing? Look, no, I'm not any of these guys. There's not a single denial in this thing. Not one. And he tries to wrap himself in authority because he says the U.S. government sent me this. And he uses the word claims and then realizes, "Uh oh, I just wrapped myself, whether it's intelligently or or not. I just wrapped myself in the authority of the U.S. government. I can't say claims. I have to say states. That's a big difference. He's correcting himself. Then more chaff just running on down the path, reading all these things. When I went through interrogator school, there was a really good video we used to show how effective an interpreter needs to be. And it was Vietnam, and it was used on CBS in like the 1960s. And they had this interpreter who was going in and asking questions of the local villagers. And one of them was going, we hate you. We want you to be gone. You need to be out of here to this American. And then a person living in the U.S. who was Vietnamese heard the interpreter and said, that's not what he's saying. He's saying chicken and dog and stuff like that, because what you've done is you got a bad guy as the interpreter who's in there and told him, just say some stuff, count to nine, do things like that. That's what this guy reminds me of. There's no passion in it, just did, 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 not trying to get himself out of trouble. There's more than you would ever see. Anyway, I'll get through this. No wife is moving in the chair, showing some more discomfort. There's just one more challenge at the end where he says, that's not what I ask and still no denial. Scott, what do you got? All right. One of my favorite things, in the, and I mean one of my all-time favorite things in the world because it fascinates me, is when an Australian person or a British person can do the American accent on TV or Netflix or something, like in The Walking Dead. I don't I don't personally watch it, but my wife uh, watches it, and sometimes I'll come in and, and, and they'll be on there. The main guy in that from the, the first version of it, he was from Australia, and he sounds like he's from over in Knoxville. I mean, you can't tell the difference, and I'm fascinated by that because we pay attention to the way someone sounds. We pay attention to their the the lilt of their voice. We try to nail down where they're from by this by their accent. These people sound like they're they. I don't know if they pick a town and go there and live for four years before they do these shows, but some of these people, and it, it's fascinating. When, when somebody goes, you know, they're British, right? Or, you know, she's Australian, right? And it's like, well, what are you talking about? I love that. That's why, Chase, I think that his his wife, I think she knew this was fake going into it because at some point on their date, he's going to mess up with his whatever accent he, choose, he chose to use. If he says he's British or is he saying he's British or what is that? I don't know what he's saying he is. He's British, right? What is he saying he is? Well, he, I think he says he was born in Ireland. I think he says he was oh, okay. in Dublin, but then he says that he had a rough childhood in in um, in Northern Ireland. So there's a whole uh, bunch. He's from Rhode Island, but he's from Rhode Island. He's Rhode from Rhode Island. Island. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, I think I think she I think she knows. I, I mean, I think she knew from the top when he went and said, okay, here's what's happening. I got to tell you, because at some point he's got to come out of that, oh, you know, the, the accent and start talking like this and go, you know, here, let me tell you what's going on. Don't freak out. I got to tell you something. And she's like, what? If it went if it went down that road, because I don't think there's any way she couldn't know that. But just, just listen to her for three minutes and go, that's a weird accent, man. What's up with that? Where are you from? You know, she's zero in on, especially on that first date. So I mean that's my impression. That's that that's what I, I think would happen. That's why I think she, that's why I think she knows, or that she knew a long time ago, or however long ago it started. Uh, so let's talk about the overconfidence of the con man. They're known as confidence, uh, the confidence man or confidence woman, because they have such confidence when they go into these bullface lies and doing these things that are just uh, uh, that take unbelievable confidence. If you if you're lying that hard, you know, like Elizabeth Holmes. I mean, my gosh, man, that took confidence to be able to lie. Just look at these people right in the face and go, yeah, we're going to save some lives. Can you take a little bit of blood like this? And it tells you all these things that could be wrong with you. That takes a lot of nerve to do that. So quite often their overconfidence is what will do them in. So be careful and pay attention to the person who's overconfident. They say, well, we'll go do that. yeah, well, let's go do it right now. If there's no way to go do it. But they say, yeah, I will go do that right now. I say, we go do it. And you know, you can't. And you know, they know you can't. So you may have a, a con person, however you're going to say it, a confidence person, <laughs> a con on your hands. All right. Is that everybody? All right. Yeah. Nobody hearing that the way I'm hearing it? Sure. <laughs> oh, okay. sure it is. One of those tape replays. But again, the, the American authorities say Nicholas Alaverde and Nicholas Rossi is a person whose multiple aliases uh, was a liar, a manipulator, 
um, and was very savvy at hiding himself. So why shouldn't I believe that you're just doing that again? Uh, because um, we also have in our possession a letter from Mr. Alabadeen that was given to us by the United States authorities that claims that, or that states that he has the intention to move overseas and uh, uh, is doing that uh, for uh, his future and his safety. And he has for the aliases, you have um, an alias of uh, Alabadeen, for name N.I. Uh, Alabadeen Rosie, for name Nicholas, uh, family name Rosie, for name Nicholas Edward, family name Rosie, for name Nicholas Alabadeen, family name Rosie, for name Nicholas E, family name Rosie, for name Nicholas, family name Alan, for name Nick, family name Rosie, for name Nicholas, family name Rosie, for name Nicholas. And um, now, I, but I, I guess my question is, why shouldn't I believe that you're him? You can believe whatever you like. I'm just telling you what I know. Yeah. <laughs> I probably did. Dude, it really doesn't sound like a chair squeaking. It is a chair. <laughs> can you do it again? Sure, I can. Can you? If you like this video, Get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.